Hi guys, in this video I'm gonna give an introduction to arrays. So an array is a simple data structure that can store multiple values of the same type. So let's start out with the variables. So let's say we have a variable type in and this stores a number, it's a single integer and let's say we want to have multiple integers and they are related. Say we want to always store three numbers. So we could do int number one, int number two, int number three. Now if we have functions and we need to pass these values to functions, we always have to pass three variables to functions. Wherever we want to read it, we have to always um, read the three values and we have essentially three separate variables. Now we could simplify the declaration by putting that into a single line, number one, number two, and number three. And it gets more complex the more uh, values we need. So in this case I only have three, what if we need a uh, hundred or a thousand? And that's really where the power of arrays comes into play. So for an array, I also type the data type that I want, an integer, and let's say we want to have an array of three integers. We type number and then we have the brackets and inside the brackets we, we define the number of integers that we want. So if we want three, we put a three in the brackets. So this is an array here, so I add as a comment above our array has now three values. Now we haven't defined the values, so essentially right now it's a question mark. Each value is uninitialized. And the values inside an array are often referred to as elements. So this array has three elements. An array, an element is really just a value. Now how can we access these values? So we always use an index or also called offset or subscript to access these elements. And the index always starts with zero. So we have zero, one, and two. Zero would access the first element, one the second, and two the third. Now, why does it start with zero and not with one? That's really the way um, arrays are represented in memory. So the elements here in the array are stored sequentially. And the variable, in this case number, refers to the very first memory address. So that's the address of the first element. And the index here, this is really the offset from that address. So basically, if I, if I know whenever I refer to number, it's my first element, I don't want to add anything to that address. So if I add zero to that address, it's just the first element. If I add one, it's basically the size of the data type. So one integer further than my starting point. This would give me the address of the second element. Or if I say the starting element here, the first, very first element where my array variable um, goes to, and I add two integers further, I would be at the third element. That's why the index starts at zero and not with one. So it's really an offset from the start. Now, how can we work with the index? So let's say we want to initialize the values. Let's say four and eight. Now I use my variable here and I use the brackets again. And then inside the brackets, I define the index. So if I put zero equals four, this would store four as a first element in the array. And then if I do number one in brackets, and equal eight, this will store eight at this, as a second element. Then if I do number two, assign, let's say five, this would assign five as the last element. Now I can also read values. So let's say I want to output the three values. I can output oops, 
index zero stores value number. I use brackets again, should be zero, and output it. So with with arrays, we always have the variable name, and then we use the brackets to define the offset. So remember, zero always the very first element. Then if I want to output the second element at index one, I would put number one. And now because these values or elements in the array are stored sequentially, I can also use loops. So I can do four int i equals zero i less than three i plus plus. And then I output number and I use a variable here i. So this loop will start with i0, so we'll output the first element. It will increment i to 2 to 1. 1 is less than 3, so we'll output the second element, then increment to 2. 2 is less than 3, we'll output the third element, and then increment to 3. 3 is not less than 3, so we'll stop. And the loop I can also use to initialize elements. So this is really the very basic. Please check out my next video on arrays, but I hope this is enough uh, to give you a basic understanding of arrays. Thank you for watching.